G'day, Damned here. Today we're going to create a top secret character sheet in Morecore. I'm going to do that with as little programming as possible. Now, of course, I've created some top secret roles in here already uh, for somebody else, but we're going to just show how one of how we'd build up a character sheet uh, for any particular game. The process that we go through here today will be quite similar um, for how you would do it for any particular game. I've done another video here on building character sheet up for Dungeon World, and today we're going to do one for Top Secret. Now this is going to be the old school original Top Secret from way back in the 80s. So what we've got here is a brand new more core campaign. We've uh, just loaded up the more core rule set and I'm creating a new character sheet. So the first thing we do is create a role using the role under role and we're setting up our primary attributes here. So uh, we've got seven attributes here and we're going to set each of those up and I'm basically setting the first one up as a role under with a D100 and using the formulas to set the target number, the roll under number, as the P1 value. And then what I'm doing is just dragging those multiple times and then renaming them. Now, the way you set your primary attributes in Top Secret is to roll a D100 seven times, and then if the result is less than 25, you add 20 to the value, and so on up, so that the results are skewed towards your character being better than average. Now, my character is not particularly better than average. He's got some pretty lousy rolls there, but nonetheless, we'll roll with it. Strength is my highest score, and I think that my lowest score there is a 26, and um, we've applied that to charm. So then we've got some secondary attributes, and secondary attributes uh, are the average of two primary attributes. So what we do here is use a top secret role, so slash top secret, 1D100, um, and you can see there that it's less than the sum of A plus B. And A and B are reference fields. So what we do is we drag the primary attributes into A and B. And that will then sum those values. Just at the moment, I'm just setting up all the placeholders for them. And then we've got some tertiary attributes. And tertiary attributes are the average of either a primary and a secondary or of two secondary attributes. Now, I've got to look up the rule book to see what each of these are. Um, but each of these uh, secondary and tertiary attributes are the sum of two other attributes and we need to drag those into uh, ref fields A and ref fields B and then they'll get auto calculated. Now if those primary stats change or even the secondary stats change the roles, the secondary and tertiary roles will update. They may not update on the character sheet visibly straight away but as soon as you open them or as soon as you roll them they will be rechecked for accuracy and if they're not valid they will update and then roll. So uh, that's really nice and handy. So that's one of the really nice features of the parameters uh, is that we can manage these more complex stats just by managing the, the primary stats and um, adjusting those as your character develops. Now, your character has some other things to flesh out. There's a height table. And what I've done here is I've, I've created um, three tables. So if you roll a 1, you roll on a short table, and if you roll a 10, you roll on the tall table, uh, otherwise it just uses that first result. Um, there are three types of classes in Top Secret, and we're just going to flesh out the confiscation class here, and we're actually we're just going to do the first six levels. And there's not a whole lot of um, class information to deal with, at least at this stage, so all we're doing is putting in the level, the experience required for the next level and the name of the class um, or the name that you carry at that level. So this is kind of real old school D&D where as you progress through your class, you've got a new title. And that's the same here 
in Top Secret. It's another nice old school role playing system. So you can see here that uh, level five, you're a burglar. And we're going to drag a class of confiscation into the character sheet. And you can see here that Mel Rasmussen is now a level one confiscation. And you require 400 experience points next level and shoplifter. Right. So what we wanted to do here was edit how that output looks. So it now says you are now you are known as a shoplifter rather than just shoplifter. So you can see how that is adjusted. Um, and when you're creating character sheets or, or putting stuff into more core, you're going to experiment a little bit and tweak things over time. You're going to find better ways of doing things, more streamlined ways of doing things, or perhaps more in-depth ways of doing things. Now we're going to add a bunch of parameters, sorry, modifiers to our character sheet. And the reason we're doing that is that there's a whole bunch of modifiers and a lot of these are to do with combat. So if the shooter is crawling or walking or running or stationary or stationary and prone or waiting, um, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, you can have running, running and dodging. Uh, each of those things can add different modifiers to your, your character's offensive role. And we'll see in a minute that we'll do the same for the defender or the target. So if the target is crawling or waiting or walking or running or prone, any of those things, the there's also a penalty, a modifier on those rolls. You can see almost all of these are negative. So almost all of these make it harder for you to attack. The only ones that really don't are if you are stationary and prone. So when you're prone um, and you're shooting, you have a slightly better chance of success. Pretty much everything else there is going to be a negative. You can see here when we add these in there, uh, it affects the outcome of the role. We've got a few extra ones now. These ones are wounded. If you're wounded uh, lightly and if you're wounded heavily, you also suffer some penalties. Yeah, that's only for the attacker in this particular one. So we can see a minus five penalty for a light wound, minus 20 penalty for a heavy wound. If you brace your weapon, you get a positive bonus. If you are shooting more than one round in that um, combat, turn uh, there's a penalty and if you shoot more than two rounds the penalty is a cumulative so it's a minus 10 penalty on the first shot minus 20 on the second shot a minus 30 on the third shot we're going to add in stats for a weapon and again the weapon is affecting our offensive role so the nine millimeter fn browning pistol um, has a base weapon value of 47 so we're going to add that in there and you can see here that I've put in a zero, that's a penalty for point blank, and minus 50 is a penalty for a short range. And they are not, um, uh, actual modifiers. What they, or they're not coded in here, they're just placeholders at the moment. And what I did was actually just drag one of those to the modifier box and that works the same way. And I've done that just for um, real estate space. And we'll see a bit later on that I actually change how we're doing that. Now when we're hitting, when we hit an opponent, there's a, it's not a straightforward hit or miss. Um, once you hit, there are various different results. So we can see that there's a table and if you roll 1D100 after you hit, and then you get A, B, and C results, and A, B, and D results. So when I first type those in, I realize you've got to look up another table. So what I do is just type these out. So um, A is the, this is what happens if uh, the offensive role is exactly equal to the target. It means that you hit the enemy's weapon, and then you roll on the hit weapons table. So the weapon is damaged, then the B is the weapon is dropped, and uh, D is the projectile deflects into the target. There's another one there that projectile deflects away from the target. So if the target is standing next to other people, it could hit one of those. The next one is that um, the projectile deflects um, towards the shooter. And 
there's lots of different options here. So um, projectile is lodged in the weapon but does no damage. Uh, we can see various different results. The next one that we're doing here is uh, the injuries table. And this is when you hit, uh, we have a hit location table. So um, we roll another D100 to see where you hit your target. So once you're successful with your offense roll, and if you were successful and didn't hit the weapon, then you roll what body part you hit. Now, if it turns out that the body part that you hit was hidden behind some sort of solid obstacle, maybe a wall or a telegraph pole or something like that, a vehicle, then it's ruled that even though you rolled a hit, that it struck um, some other object or struck their clothing and caused no damage. So we can see here, uh, head, neck, right arm, right hand, uh, left arm, left hand. Um, my roll there was a head, neck roll. So it's pretty hard if you're engaged in combat for your head to be covered. You can't shoot at someone if you don't stick your head above the cover to fire. Next thing that we're going to do is um, re-look at this. We've been thinking about, there's quite a few modifiers, so I was just thinking about it and I thought, what if we just create all these mod these as modifiers um, in the general table? And I'm creating very similar ones here. So I've got wounded light, wounded heavy, weapon braced, hand two-handed, hand offhand. So we've got some new ones here that we didn't put in. And where possible, I've started, I've named these modifiers so that they are um, grouped together. And I've done that simply by prefixing them with something common. So wounded, light, wounded, heavy, they stick together. Hand, offhand. So if you're right-handed and you shoot with your left hand um, and you're not shooting with two weapons, if you're just shooting with your left hand, say you got shot in your right hand and there's a minus 10 penalty. Say you're shooting with two pistols at the same time, so you're shooting two-handed the penalty is minus 30. Now, a lot of these penalties can stack. So if you're shooting with your offhand and you're crawling and your opponent is running, there's going to be a whole bunch of modifiers that stack. So I'm putting all of these in here. And you can see here, the ones I put on the character sheet, I'm putting them back in here. And we, I don't know which one we'll end up using. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens in play. But we've got, um, I'm prefixing the shooter ones with the word attacker and I'm shooting the target ones probably with the word defender. Uh, no, I've used target. So I've got target crawling and attacker crawling. We've got the two different ones there. And what we're going to do here is add another one for the weapon range because there's actually four ranges. There's point blank, short, medium and long range. Now a pistol doesn't work at long range. It only works at short, at point blank, short and medium ranges. Um, and so that's like three fields. So at point blank, there's no modifier. At media, at short range, there's a minus 50 modifier. And at long range, there's a 150 modifier. They haven't put a roll type in here because all we're going to do if we need to use one of these is we just click on that number and we drag it to the modifier box. I'm now moving to an NPC. Sorry, we're racing through this. Um, the NPC sheets a little bit different, um, but and the NPC sheets don't have all the same uh, fields that we have on our character sheets. They've got a few less secondary and tertiary um, attributes. And you can see just for ease of getting things set up the first time, I'm just copying these roles from my character sheet, putting them in, and you can see that they kept the same values. So. I'm going through and I'm, I'm taking something from Spreck in the Holter Stella, taking one of the uh, um, NPCs from there, and I'm just sticking his stats in. And you can see that Deception, when I dragged it over, it kept the values from Mel Rasmussen. Um, it didn't create its own values. Um, but when I opened the roll up, uh, it recalculated it. And if I just rolled it, it would do the same. But what I've found here is that um, the values in these sheets aren't necessarily perfect according to the calculations sometimes the adventure module has numbers that vary so i'm just going to use the roll under and put them all in exactly the same and i'm going to copy over my weapons rolls and we're just going to do a test here to see if this character is any good drag it in 
hit the rolls tab and we can see it's only doing the CT rolls, my mistake. I've got to put all the rolls into the CT rolls. Um, we can put values and attributes, other rolls and other rolls, and you can use them for calculating formulas, but they won't show up on the combat tracker where the GM can use them quickly in combat. So really we want to put all of these values into the uh, CT rolls where we're going to use them. And I'm clearing them off the attributes. And you can see here my three weapon ones. I've just prefixed them with an A dot. And that's just the way you have to do it to get them to order and group together. So my nine millimeter to hit roll is there and my nine millimeter range ones are there and my hit locations. So you can see there that the uh, Michael Wick character uh, NPC character is in the combat tracker and all his roles are available and they output to chat quite nicely. And one thing we can see here is that, that the role under role um, is using the player name instead of the character name for the role description and that's obviously less than um, perfect so I will probably tweak that in the Morka rule set and update that so that it works better. I may even create a similar copy of that that uses the top secret icon for the roles uh, just for aesthetics purposes. Um, now what we're going to do, you don't want to do that every single time you create a character. You So what you can actually do here is um, we can, once we've got this character pretty much how we want it, we can just click and drag it to another spot and you can see that it pauses for uh, several seconds and while it's doing that it is actually recreating all of those roles and the links to the roles, the parameters, the values and all of that sort of stuff. What we can do now is go through, roll your new character up, put in the values in the primary attributes and the secondary attributes, although they haven't changed visibly just at the moment, they will change as soon as you use them, either by opening them or by uh, rolling them and that will get them all to be updated. So we can see here now we have a new character, Andrea Durkov, and she is completely stand up and that took us um, you know, more like two minutes to do rather than the 20 minutes that it took us to build the first one. And we can do the same for our NPCs. All we have to do is uh, drag and drop our test NPC into a blank spot in the character sheet and uh, sorry, into a blank spot in the NPC roles and it will uh, duplicate it. We can input the new stats now, if you're using a published adventure, it will have all those stats in a nice long big table, just donkey work, copying and pasting them back in, and we've got functional characters. We're not going to do any combat uh, demonstration here. You can see the roles. Um, it's quite narrative, backwards and forwards with the GM and the player. And that's how we're going to set up our character and NPC sheets for the top secret role-playing game using Morecore. I hope you found that uh, fairly straightforward. If you've got any questions, hit me up on Discord, hit me up on the forums, or even post down here below in YouTube and I will respond to you as quickly as I can. Please let me know how you go with it all. Have fun.